from kicking suspects to Perez striking Crudup and slamming him to the ground. To beating patients. Oh, oh. Get down. Get down. Get down. These five officers once swore to uphold the law, but the only thing they'll be holding is orange jumpsuits. Disclaimer. Number 1. Giovanni Crespo Crespo faces six charges, including aggravated manslaughter and official misconduct. On the night of January 28, 2019, Gregory Griffin was pulled over for speeding. The officer reportedly told him to turn off the engine during the stop, but he didn't comply. Sir, turn off the vehicle. Turn off the vehicle, sir. Turn it off. Uh, Turn off the car and roll down the window. Open the door. Then she noticed a gun near the driver and immediately ordered him to put his hands up. Let me see your hands! Hands! Hands on the wheel! Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Instead, Griffin put his foot on the pedal and hightailed it out of there. Be advised, the vehicle took off. Thomas in Pennsylvania. 2017, I mean, Chrysler 300, color black. The officer radioed for backup as she followed after him. One of the officers who joined the frenzied high-speed chase was Giovanni Crespo and his partner. When the patrol car pulled close side by side with the fleeing car, Crespo jumped out of the car, brought out his gun, and fired. not at the car's tires, but directly into the car at the men. He missed, but not for long. He hopped back into the car and they continued the chase. Shots fired on that vehicle, shots fired. He repeatedly urged his partner to drive faster. Oh, come on. At one point, his partner even told him to relax. Let it out, get in. It must have been the opposite day because Crespo pulled that stun again. The third time the car came to a stop, a pumped up Crespo raced to the car. Stop! He barely ordered them to stop the car before he shot through the passenger side. Stop the car! hitting both men in the head, killing Griffin, and severely injuring his passenger, Andrew Dixon. It should be under his leg. Does anybody fires a weapon here? No, no. Later, as more officers arrived, Crespo kept telling everyone what he'd just done over and over and over. I shot him in the head. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Get the gun. I shot both of them. Yeah, I shot both. Yeah, yeah. You good? Yeah. yeah. I shot both of them here. Okay, right and here. Then, uh, After reviewing the footage, the department determined that Crespo had used excessive force. He was immediately suspended from the department and arrested. During the trial, Crespo's defense attorney argued that Crespo was a superhero. This law enforcement officer saved lives that night. End of story. But the prosecution saw the evidence differently, mainly because Crespo's story had changed. This defendant shot Gregory Griffin through the back of the head, severing his brain stem and killing him, and shooting his friend Andrew Dixon in the face, causing serious bodily injury. After six days of deliberation, the jury came back with a verdict. Crespo was found guilty on all counts. Several of Crespo's family members broke into tears. Their sobs and screams filled the courtroom. One woman began screaming in Spanish as she rushed out of the courtroom. 
He's facing up to 30 years for his stupid actions in January. Speaking of stupid actions, you won't believe what this officer did to a patient just because he called him bro. But before that, number two, Jordi Yanes Martel. Take a good look at this face because this is the last person you want to see in your nightmares. Jordi Martel faces four battery charges and one trespassing charge. In January 2020, Martel, an officer with the Miami Gardens Police Department, filed an arrest report alleging that while he was working off-duty security at Tootsie's Cabaret, he had tased a drunk woman who refused to sit on the curb and was punching and kicking at officers. Then, months later, a video leaked, and authorities realized everything they knew about that arrest was a lie. We are all here today to correct what we all see as an injustice that we are alleging is actually a crime. It all started when 32-year-old Sofia Sacho was kicked out of Tootsie's Cabaret for throwing money at a waitress. She was trying to leave when Martel approached her. The club owner had told him to tell her to never return, but Martel had other ideas. Is there a reason why you need Yes, you're being trespassed from the location. Okay. okay. You need to follow me to my car, please? He told her she was trespassing and ordered her to step out of the car. When Satchel refused, he reached into the car, opened the door, and dragged her out and threw her on the ground. Oh, reach in my car? Is you crazy? Man. You can't reach in Listen, my car. What are you doing? Like, no, what is he doing? I'm a, like, come on, don't be pulling the Why is your like, what is wrong with Why you the f While kneeling on Satchel's neck, Martel got out his stun gun and hit her twice in the stomach. Why is you kneeing on her neck though? That's weird as Why is I kneeing on her neck though? Why is you kneeing on her neck Get back! Get back! The video was a third strike against Martel, who was already on thin ice after being seen in another video using excessive force. Barely two years after the Miami Gardens Police Department had hired him, Martel was fired and found himself facing charges of his own. The trial began with the prosecution painting a graphic picture of Martel's actions that night. The defendant, that man at that table, while holding one of her arms with his hand, puts his knee on her neck while she's on her back and her stomach is only covered by this thin piece of material, but his actions do not stop there. And pointing out the lies he used in covering up the arrest report. And just misrepresented other facts that are also necessary. <coughs> The defense fired back that Martel's knee was not on her neck and tried to blame Satchel for not cooperating. You do see that, but you are not going to see any clear indication that that neck or that that knee is actually on the neck. In fact, you're going to hear contrary evidence to that. In the end, Martel was found not guilty of the felony charges, but guilty of battery and trespassing. Before the sentence was handed down, Satchel finally faced the officer who'd attacked her. From his knee choking the life out of me, fabricating reports and lying on me, to being tased multiple times in the abdomen while being pregnant, I want him to suffer as much as he intended for me to suffer that night. Martel also spoke in court, but the judge was not convinced. I take full responsibility for my actions and for what happened that night. It did not only affect me, Satchel, it affected me as well. Martel was sentenced to 30 days in jail, and he has to spend a minimum of 100 hours speaking at the police academy about what not to do when serving as a police officer. You might think that a little drinking can make anyone, including an officer, lose it. But our next officer was right in a hospital, so what's his excuse? Number three, John Romer. Hitting a patient because he called you bro might sound crazy, but crazy is John Romer's middle name. He was charged with official oppression and making a false report to a peace officer. On November 5, 2016, 20-year-old Henry Newsom was discharged from Texas Harris Methodist Hospital in Fort Worth, Texas. While in the lobby, he borrowed a cell phone to call his mother to pick him up. Suddenly, the guards accosted him, asking him why he was in the hospital. Where's his home at? Okay. You know where at in Fort Worth? I Newman explained he was calling a parent to pick him up, but his answers didn't satisfy them, so they continued to hound him for answers. So your phone's coming to pick you up here? Alright, well I'm asking you a question. Okay, well I'm asking you a question. If you see me on the phone, I sit there on the phone. My dad trying to get in contact with my mother. I should tell you the phone. Okay, so do they know what hospital this is? Yes, they do. What? My mom knows. What hospital is this? I told you. 
What is it? I don't have to repeat myself. It's freedom of speech. You never told me. But my mom, I told her. With my freedom of speech, I told my mother where I was. One of the guards was John Romer, a police officer working an off-duty security job at the hospital. He immediately ordered Newsom to shut up and pushed him toward the exit. Get off. Right, here you go. Go. Here you go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Newsom protested, shouting, Don't touch me, bro! That three letter word switched a button in Romer's brain. Bro, I'm bad job. Oh! Christ! Get down! 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 He immediately punched Newsom in the head, kicked him, and placed him in a headlock, and pulled him to the ground. <laughs> Two other officers joined the fray, piling on Newsom, punching him and kicking him before cuffing him and wiping their bloodied hands on Newsom's shirt. It was after this assault that Romer told Newsom that he was arresting him for criminal trespass and resisting arrest, charges that shocked Newsom. I'm fixing to put another charge on you. I don't have any charges. You're under arrest for resisting. I didn't ever resist from you. You punched me in my face. Hey, boss. Are you serious? Hey, boss. Uh, oh, bro. You got, you you got, got, got I'm stuck with this man, bro. Nah, gloves, gloves, gloves. Nah, dog. Uh, oh, you gotta call my father, dog. Hey, We're gonna up. get you somewhere. Hey, nah, up. man. I didn't even do nothing. I'm talking to him. Then they took him out in handcuffs as he continued to protest his innocence. Nah, bro. Hey, yo. Yeah, Richardson Tower Ground hey. Floor. I got one of them. Even though he was already in cuffs, Romer continued to assault Newson. Newsom was taken to jail that night. When Romer appeared before a grand jury later that year, he swore that Newsom had attacked him first, so he retaliated. He thought he'd gotten away with it since he'd worked 16 years on the force and had gotten away with much worse. Let's rewind to February 2011. Romer shot a disabled father of three, Charal Thomas, 12 times while the kids watched from the back seat. There was a public outcry, but Romer was given qualified immunity. Even then, the police chief defended his actions. It's easy to stand on the outside of police work and, and point a finger of either racism or something uh, inappropriate from the police officer's perspective. We have the hardest job in the nation. Uh, and when we make decisions that have that level of seriousness, uh, we will be criticized by uh, many, many areas of our community. But this time, Romer would not get away so easily. After a look into the arrest, the charges against Newsom were dismissed and Romer found himself on the hot seat facing charges of his own. His defense tried to claim that Romer was right to punch Newsom because he was disrespectful, but the prosecution had the right evidence against him. He lied about whether or not he had told Henry Newsom that he was under arrest. So we have it right there on the camera. You have the audio running, you have the video running. The video recording of the incident. The jury also heard from the county prosecutor who threw out the case against Newsom. The amount of force used against this young man was still inappropriate. A jury was not going to be receptive to that. I was like, I didn't like it when I first saw it. It took me one time to view that to not like it. Romer was found guilty of all charges and a judge sentenced him to five years behind bars. Mistaken identity is one thing, but what happens when an officer viciously attacks a suspect just because he got mad? We're talking about Officer Kevin Perez. He was charged with felony battery. It started like a joke. In the early hours of July 26, 2021, 26-year-old Dalonta Crudup was enjoying the last days of his vacation at Miami Beach. That day, he rode a rented scooter to see his friends. As he tried to park, he fell over. Some officers milling around laughed along with his friends at the spectacle. Then Crudup gave the officers the middle finger and zoomed off, running over one officer's foot. The other officers tried to get him to stop, but Crudup refused. A high-speed chase began. Once Crudup got to the hotel, he ran into an elevator, but a lieutenant rushed into the lobby and stopped him at gunpoint. Crudup dropped to the ground and was cuffed. More officers poured in and started 
trying to dish out their brand of jungle justice, kicking Crudup, hitting him, and slamming him to the ground. Crudup had to get six stitches after the vicious assault. Kevin Perez was one of the five Miami Beach officers charged in the incident. He had kicked Crudup's head at least three times. The trial began with the prosecution painting a picture of a man intimidated by the police. This defendant punches him in the back of the head, and that's on his body on camera comes up to him and punches him right in the back of the head. But the defense saw it very differently. They saw Crudup as a mischievous person who made trouble wherever he went. Dr. Crudup was the bad guy, and Kevin Perez, a police officer, is the good guy. They caught a lucky break when they learned he'd been arrested in Washington, D.C. and Kentucky after this incident. After deliberating for two hours and asking to view the video clip over and over, the jury came back with a guilty verdict. Perez's disappointment was evident as he shook his head in shock. But this is not as bad as when one inmate lost an organ because he got severely beaten by a cop. This is Peter Delio, and his knees are licensed to kill. Delio was charged with felony battery with great bodily harm. On the night of August 12, 2014, Robert Lease was taken into a police holding cell over a $60 debt. Little did he know that by the end of the night, he'd be missing an organ as well. It all started at the underground bar in downtown Orlando, Florida. Robert had ordered 12 shots of Jack Daniels and couldn't clear his tab. He offered to wash dishes to cover the tab, but the manager refused. I mean, even a bull in a china store would do less damage than this drunk. The manager called the police. Peter Delio, an officer with the Orlando Orlando Police Department arrived on the scene and handcuffed Lease, but he did not go peacefully. At the station, his manners didn't improve. While still in restraints, Lease headbutted the glass on a door, breaking it. An angry Delio barged into the cell and struck Lease in the stomach with his knee. Lease immediately crumpled. Delio placed him on the floor and left him there. Lease shouted for help 35 times, but the officers ignored him, talking and laughing outside the cell. An hour and a half would pass before one officer walked in in asking why he was causing such a racket. When Lee was taken to the hospital, the doctors found out he had a ruptured spleen and was bleeding internally. He was brought in in the nick of time. A few minutes more and he would be dead. Both officers were fired from the department, and that was only the beginning for Delio. He was also charged with battery. Delio pleaded not guilty and took the stand, defending his actions that day. But the video clip was much more compelling to the jury, and he was found guilty. His elderly parents took the stand and cried as they begged for leniency. Please do not let his stoic appearance lead you to believe that he is not deeply sorry for the injury that he caused Mr. Lease. We all are. He's not a cruel man. He's not, a, he's not an unjust man. It, it, it just was, he was just in the wrong place at the right time. With the writing on the wall, Delio went from proclaiming his innocence to admitting he'd made a mistake. I understand why the jury made the decision they did. It's clear to me why they did. I was wrong, and I caused your injury, sir. And I am deeply sorry that I did, and that you had to suffer through that. The judge invariably sentenced him to 51 months in county jail, followed by probation. Then he would complete an anger management class and pay restitution. 